Living Waters presents On the Box. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of On the Box. Where have you been? And we are live. We're, we're back. Live. And we're alive. <laughs> we're back. Yeah, it's good to be home. And we're big. We're bigger now. Big, yes. back, and alive. The food in Israel was good. Oh, yes. I ate my first falafel, and I feel fine. Falafel sounds like it wasn't nice. Well, <laughs> Falafel. It, I, it's falafel. I, look, I'm, I'm not a very adventurous eater, as, mm -hmm. as many, many people know. My wife and children are nodding their heads right now. But we came down off of uh, Mount Hermon, mm -hmm. right, which was uh, amazing to be, be up there. And we had lunch in a little mom-and-pop restaurant run by cultists where I had my first falafel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, What's a falafel? Uh, it's uh, chickpeas, garbanzo beans, ground up into a ball, deep fried, and then put in pita bread. So it's nothing like a burrito. I would say it's nothing like a burrito. That's right. Yeah. In fact, yeah. in fact, uh, the Jewish community in, in uh, Santa Clarita, where I live, attempted to cook the world's largest falafel ball yesterday. <laughs> was it something I can't make this stuff was up. Was it something to do with you? You asked for it? I did not ask for it, no. <laughs> no, no. Hey, we want to thank you for uh, watching the show while we were gone. And thanks for praying for us. Thanks for Things praying went for us. To, to went real bad after we left. Yeah, things are starting to fall apart there. Mm -hmm. We were up on the Golan Heights mm -hmm. uh, overlooking Syria and Lebanon, and that's one of the places, one of the flashpoints right now with all of the unrest. And, did you uh, throw a rock before you left? I, d uh, I can't say. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say. Oh. Chad, welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any, that was powerful. Anything else wow, to say, Chad? That was amazing. Hey, we got some footage of some rock throwing going on. We yeah. Now, you already posted that. That's on the blog, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Past tense. Yeah, one of our bus drivers took some rocks just after uh, dropping us off. He took so. some. Yeah, meaning his bus. They, oh, I thought he took the, some rocks. The Muslims finish. Most Christians take some rocks and, from Israel. Well, oh, the, the, the whole land is disappearing because the Christian tourists taking rocks here. And okay, there. all right. So I took some. You took some? I did. Oh, I didn't know. Well, that. Actually, what I well, no, I did take a, rocks. Didn't mean to embarrass you. That's okay. I, I I took a few rocks. Uh, from How big a rock do you have to no, steal before I stealing? I don't know. But I took a whole bunch of pieces of pottery from. Oh, you did. Yeah, shards of oh, pottery. Oh, from that uh, museum. No, not from the museum, from oh. Shiloh. Oh, okay. From uh, Shiloh. In fact, uh, when I mentioned that in the blog, some of the atheists were saying, yeah, well, you know, if you steal. take all of those, you know, there's not going to be left any left for anyone else. Like, they care. Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. Are you uh, allowed to take? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Now that I've gone through I, LL I, security, which is the finest security in the airline industry, yeah, by the way. Yeah. Um, yes, I, will, I don't know if we're allowed to take them, <laughs> but I did. Mm. It, does it, mm. Did you say in your blog what happened, what the guys did on the plane when we first got on at 1 a.m.? How they took their sleeping pills? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Greg Alsasa took two prescription sleeping pills. You're only supposed to take one, I think. Yeah, and, <coughs> and we sat down after a... He wasn't the only one. Busy. Oh, no, this is this. Uh, Mark Spence took a sleeping pill. Who else? Greg Alsasa. Yeah. And two of the other guys. Anyway... We got I on at 1 Chad. Ch yeah. Oh, Chad was out of it. Yeah, what did grumpy. you take? Yeah, what did he you was <laughs> grumpy. Okay, what did he you was a bit <laughs> crumb the cranky side. What did That's you take? For me to say. What did you take, Chad? Uh, I, something you gave me. <laughs> <laughs> Ray had a couple of pills in his pocket. <laughs> That's how, he he says, hey, you That's ever how tried drug these? dealers get kids hooked on drugs. They <laughs> give them free drugs. And I said, what's that? <laughs> yeah, so what did you take? I don't know. A couple of blue little pills from Ray. Next thing you know, I'm... Pass it out on the airplane. <laughs> Finally getting some sleep. And then they pulled us off. Because I have a yeah. roommate that will remain unnamed. That <laughs> I got snored. Up, I got up at, <laughs> at 4 a.m. that day. Had a, just a busy day. Oh, it was, know, a, it was down a on the fullest day. Flop down on the plane at 1 o'clock thinking, ah, oh, it's all over. No, it wasn't. They kicked us off for three hours. Greg Alsace flat on his face in the floor. Yeah, the I airport. did post a picture of that. Yeah, yeah of you yeah. sleeping on... Well, your head resting on. It you know. didn't only last about 30 seconds because you kept breathing. <laughs> There's nothing worse than a breathing pillow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, initially they told us that it was a communication problem on the plane, but we later learned that the fuel was poisoned. Yeah. Now, that. that they don't know if it was. A yeah, terrorist. right, right. They, don't, they are not saying that it was intentional, but the fuel mixture was off. Good to find that out on the ground than, you know, halfway home over to the oh Atlantic. Yeah, so. Yeah. so it's great to be kicked off at 1 o'clock yeah. in the morning. All right, we're going to talk more about Israel in uh, just a couple of minutes. We're going to show you some pictures. Yes, we're going to bore you with a slideshow. And then we're going to take, we know you've missed us. Family photos. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but this then, is Israel, the land of God in the Bible. Yeah, and then we're going to take some uh, questions out of the chat room because uh, it's been a while since we've gotten to chat with you folks and we want to do that. So make sure you send questions. Send them. Send questions. All right, today's giveaway is one of our IQ. Some of the questions can be about Israel, too. They can, sure. And we may or may not be able to answer them, mm. but we'll try. That's with everything else. That's with everything else, right. Uh, today's giveaway is the IQ test, one of our IQ test uh, uh, gospel tracks, business cards. These are pretty effective, don't you think, Greg? Yeah, really good. Okay. Yeah, I've, I yeah. used them for many years until the trillion dollar bill came around. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> uh, they just killed sales. <laughs> no, they're really, really good. Well, we're going to give away uh, three packs, uh, one uh, to three different uh, fortunate individuals. Just email us at onthebox at livingwaters.com. Onthebox at livingwaters.com. Full name, full address, and your zip code, please. Try to enter only once if you can per member of your household. If you can. <laughs> if you can. Well, like some people seem to be incapable of only entering box. once. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, hey, you want to go to the blog, onthebox.us. Uh, if you haven't been following the trip, we've been uh, posting. Uh, we tried to post just about every day uh, from. Israel, and so those articles, of course, are still it's up there. It's not easy to post every day. It was pretty exhausting. Yeah. It was hot. Was it? Oh. The, the second half of the week was pretty mild, I thought. Well, you were in different areas than us, and you didn't. You well, were, I had to have wear longs and long sleeves for the television programs. Oh, you said longs and long sleeves? Long pants. Oh, long pants are called longs? I don't know why. Really? So in New Zealand, you call them longs. Don't I mean, longs? I got it, right? I got it. I've only been here 22 years. Give me a break. Okay. <laughs> you have it, sir. All right. Okay, so... Well, uh, We'll talk a little bit about Israel, even though we've been doing that already. Um, I'm going to show some pictures of some of the places we've been, and Ray and Chad, uh, jump in, comment on these spots. Uh, the first one is uh, some filming we did in a Roman theater in Caesarea by the Sea. That was one of our first stops. This isn't in Rome. No. No, this is in Israel. This is in a Israel. Roman theater yeah. in Israel. You remember what episode you were working on there? It was one of the first ones. That was the first one. I woke up without a voice because mm. they put an air conditioner right over my bed, and I woke up in the morning just with a head cold. With oh, a cold. Wow. Just no voice, and uh, so I was pleased to get it by, what, 9 o'clock in the morning. It came back. Yeah. The funny so, thing uh, about that spot, too, was there's an arch that was just uh, above our heads that you folks couldn't see. You'll, but you'll probably see it in the upcoming uh, season five way the master but mark found his way up on top of that arch <laughs> he was like, there was steps going up there he said yeah, it was th no sign saying you couldn't, couldn't we, go there. we we got some video of mark climbing you did uh, or jumping rather off of off oh something. Yeah. He, he hurt himself yeah he did yeah it's the last yeah. day switch and then uh <laughs> switch <laughs> <laughs> Part of, part of uh, this uh, this Roman theater is significant in that uh, it is where the Apostle Paul uh, shared his test. That is not the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul would not wear a hat like that. Nobody would. Yeah. So I'm wearing my longs <laughs> and my shorts. Your longs right? My longs and my short. longs. Yeah. Dance. yeah. So is this the Roman theater? You're that's up. the Roman theater. Okay. And uh, that's where <coughs> Paul stood uh, on that to. Stage? Yeah, on that very stage very to uh, share his testimony with uh, King Agrippa and those who were who were gathered there, Acts 26. And that was part of the amazing thing uh, for me, uh, being in, in Israel. And it's still, I'm still letting it sink in. It, it was so kind of fast for me. It's it was like, very fast. It's like surreal. Yeah. We'd just be in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. We were on the move a lot. You know? We were moving constantly, we were yeah. Riding. So you guys in the tourist bus kind of moved as fast as we did, didn't they? We might have moved. Uh, we might have moved a little faster. I think we might have gone to more locations mm -hmm. than you because we weren't stopped for right. for filming. Right. Um, so we might have been on the move. I mean, you guys were obviously working very, very hard and and out there later than we were on some days. But uh, we were constantly on the go. I mean, we were only in some locations for half hour, forty five minutes. And mm. you know, what was your favorite? Oh, well, one of the one, what we just saw, Caesarea by the Sea. I really the really first one. The first one. That so was one of my favorites. After that. No, no, no. It was, was still a warm up. But uh, another part of that area was uh, the docks where uh, Paul likely set sail for yes. Rome. Yeah. And uh, it was amazing just that, to see that, that. That sand arena, is that what you mean? And the, where they, the water course, they brought the water down. With the right. Things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I describe it well, don't I? Yeah, <laughs> you have to be there. <laughs> yeah, you have to be there. Uh, and then we went, one of my uh, favorite places was Capernaum. Uh, mm. Capernaum on the north side of the Sea of uh, Galilee. In fact, uh, this first picture here is of uh, you with your tour guide, uh, Donnie. Donnie, yeah, yeah he wasn't a Christian. Donnie. You frustrated Donnie. How'd you frustrate Donnie, Chad? Uh, so we frustrated Donnie just because he, he was very uh, knowledgeable. I didn't mean to step on you there, Ray, but he could, he could go on and on. He knew so much about Israel, but we were always like, Donnie, you got to lock it up because we're about to start filming. <laughs> 
Oh. Yeah, I'd have to say to him, Donnie, we're not here as tourists, we're here as a film crew, so it's more important for us to film than to eat. Because he was so concerned about what time we were leaving for lunch. Oh. Because there's no point in us coming back and saying, well, we ate a lot, but we didn't get what we wanted. Right. We film, but we so. ate a lot anyways. You did? You didn't? Oh, we did. Yeah, we ate a lot. Yeah, it was yeah. Good, good food. But that uh, area where we were just uh, looking at, there was a, a Byzantine-era synagogue, about 400 A.D., and... Byzantine yeah. sounds like something you'd take, you know, for upset stomach. Could be. <laughs> pepto give, me, give, me some, give me some, give me pepto some Byzantine. Byzantine really yeah. quick. <laughs> but uh, that was built uh, directly on top of the uh, synagogue where Jesus would have taught and preached, and you right. could see the, the foundation where... Uh, uh, the first century synagogue yeah. once stood Amazing. and then we uh, saw the excavation of the actual town of Capernaum um, and this was Jesus's hometown for uh, much of his much of his ministry and uh, it was amazing. So what are we looking at there? Keep that picture up for a little while. Well, what are we looking at? We're looking at, uh, looking at foundations of homes uh, and you're looking from the front of the synagogue and uh, that's how close things were. The streets were very, very narrow. Is He's that Galilee behind it or not? Uh, it's, it's hard to tell, but the, uh, <coughs> Capernaum sits right on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee. Okay. So uh, it was uh, in very close proximity to that. But, uh, you know, you mentioned Donnie being very knowledgeable. Erez, our, our guide, uh, he was, was a Christian. He was a Christian. In fact, this was an interesting thing that he shared. Uh, there are some 10,000 registered tour guides in uh in israel and he estimates about 50 are actually born again wow yeah and uh, we were fortunate to have one of the one of the 50 and and uh, he did uh did a great job just really bringing mm -hmm. so many different areas to life mount of olives another one of my favorite spots oh that was wonderful yeah of course this picture has been seen all over the place but this one came from my camera you took that i took that well, that's a good picture well yeah. thank you done with a sock Oh, yeah, okay, two people were offended by that. Um, <laughs> what were your thoughts being up there on the Mount of Olives? W I got an interesting picture of you coming, but uh, yeah, looking, I it was looking over that. Just, it's, it's just such a famous, famous view, and to see Jerusalem like that, it's just, it's just very cool. When you understand that that's the Brook Kidron we're looking over, where Jesus right, yeah, the valley, walked, yeah, where Jesus walked valley, the valley of uh, Henan, is it? Down this side, whatever. Uh -huh. um, yeah, it's just amazing. And right below where we're standing is the uh, garden, Garden of Gethsemane. Ga I got to preach in the, the gospel in the Garden of Gethsemane. Did you? Yes. Yeah. You know how? How? The teleprompt was jammed or something, so I said to the cameraman, just hold it there, and I faked that I was reading the teleprompt really loud <laughs> because there was, a, uh, there was a Catholic lady sitting next to a priest there, and I thought, she looks so miserable. I've got to share the gospel with her, and it was just a great way to do it because yeah. she couldn't miss it, and other people on this side, so... I got to preach the gospel in the Garden of Gethsemane. Amen. Yeah. Chad, what were your thoughts about being up there on the Mount of Olives and seeing that for the first time? Well, it's naturally, it's really incredible. I'm not too fond of the Dome of the Rock, but whatever. No. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and, and then on the blog, you know, we have that video footage of, you know, they were shooting Dome of the Rock with the camera and then panning over to the left and yeah. zooming in. There's this turmoil going on with uh, Muslims throwing the rocks at the... Uh, Israeli officers, yeah. and they had some sort of a, a flare gun, I think, that they were shooting at, at the Israeli officers, and I was just really taken back that the Israeli officers put up with that. Yeah, they and show uh, a great deal of restraint. Yes. Uh, Almost to a fault, it would seem, but... I, I can't imagine, because here are these Muslims, what they're, what they're doing is they're sort of testing. They're seeing how much can they get away with. And if they don't get corrected for what they're doing, they'll inch and go a little farther and a little mm -hmm. farther. This is what we deal with overseas in, uh, sure. you know, in, in the Middle East, in, in Iraq. They're constantly testing. So you got to put them in check. And the Israeli officers were just letting them get away with a lot. And I asked uh, Donnie, why did they put up with this? And he says, well, they, just, they don't really want to get this uh, reputation for going around bullying people. As if it would be bullying just to defend yourselves from right. Muslims that are shooting these like flat guns at you and throwing rocks at tour buses and so yeah, yeah well some it's one thing really to get incredible. used to try to get used to see guy teenagers with automatic rifles or yeah, guns. The, yeah the israeli defense forces i mean they have compulsory military service and for and two the, years and the palestinians to win that area there's these young guys with guns you get off the bus and yeah everyone's, everyone's got guns yeah i mean granted we're getting older but yeah they, they just seem like babies mm -hmm. a lot of them but you know as soon as they get out of high school, whatever yeah. they would call True. high school, they have two years of compulsory service. I, I think that'd be a great thing here in the United States. 
Get some um, on yeah, the exactly. Teenagers. Yeah, but they, they I are. I think it's three, three for the men. Is okay. it three for the men, two, two for, for the women? women. Oh, okay. For the show. Go, go. And uh, something interesting happened on the Mount of Olives when you were there to film. You ran into uh, a camel. I did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there it is. Oh, yes, yeah. that's right. I get share made. a little bit about that? I get made. See, that guy's got an R on his T-shirt for Ray. Is it an R? Yeah, it is an R. Okay. It's, it's the stomach's really rounded so that oh. the, <laughs> it pulls the, the uh, part of the R up. But yeah, that was, that was the camel I didn't have to kiss. The other camel I was made to kiss. Yeah, you there? Kiss. Yeah. No, I wasn't there for the kissing part of the camel. Oh, no, no, I got no, no, up. No, the no, the no. camel owner says, kiss the camel. I says, I'm married. I'm not kissing no camel. And he says, kiss the camel. And he says, watch this. And he says, camel kissed me, and the camel kissed him. So I thought, I know what I'll do. This is how I don't have to kiss the camel. I'll say, I won't kiss unless Chad kisses it. So Chad steps up to the plate. You should have known. Kisses the <laughs> you camel. You should have known. <laughs> and so I had to do Chad's it. Chad's never met a double dog there he didn't like. I know. Well, you that know? was it. You know, yeah. climb that camel. He's I'll tell you what, though. Look in that camel in the eyes for a moment <laughs> just before I gave it a kiss. I was thinking, this thing's going to spit right in my <laughs> face. I actually <laughs> asked. I said, does your camel spit? And uh, if it spat on me, he'd say, it's not my camel. <laughs> 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 and uh, we're going to show you one more, and then we want to get to your questions out of the chat room. Uh, Yad Vashem, the uh, Holocaust Museum oh, yeah. at, uh, there amazing. in uh, Israel. Just an amazing place. That, that, go ahead and put that back up, Danny. That, that was part of the uh, uh, Garden of Righteousness, the Walk of Righteousness there at the museum. They have some 24,000 trees. Uh, each tree is dedicated to a Gentile or Gentile family that assisted the Jews during uh, the Holocaust. And that tree is the smallest one uh, for a reason. That's for Corey Ten Boom, her sister and uh, her father. Uh, th the first tree was planted uh, in the 1960s. Mm. The day that Corey Ten Boom died, that tree died mm. in, in that, uh, in that wow. walk. And so they replanted it uh, the day that she died. And that's why that was the smallest. And, mm. and uh, walking through that uh, museum just uh, we didn't get to go through it. Was oh. it very moving? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I've, uh, I found myself going through that that uh, that museum, and uh, my love for the Jewish people grew, mm. and, and the Holocaust became more than more than an event. You know, I mean, it's 70 years later. I'm, um, you know, only in my late 40s. It's easy to be removed and just look at it as an event in a textbook. But the way they have set up that Holocaust museum. Uh, to show the lives of the Jewish people in Germany and other places in Europe prior to uh, Hitler was coming into power. Of shoes? There was, yeah, was, that was under glass. Yeah. Um, they had some of the uh, some of the carts that they actually carried the bodies to right. the crematoriums, and um, it was very, very moving. And the very last room uh, in that museum is the Hall of Names, mm. and I think we have a, a picture of that. Uh, a photo by uh, David Shankbone, who took that. Uh, uh, the very last room, they have pictures of people who were murdered in the Holocaust. And then underneath that dome are just shelves and shelves of binders. And each binder contains names and personal data of the, all the people they've been able to identify that were uh, murdered during the Holocaust. And you know, when we first walked in uh, to that uh, museum, there was... Uh, a quote on the wall by someone named Kurt Tucholsky. And uh, Alan Pearson uh, first saw it. He was moved to tears. I saw it. I was moved to tears. I showed it to Ron. And it, it, it struck us. And it was very appropriate. It's the first thing you saw. And it, it said, a country is not only what it does. It is also what it puts up with, what it tolerates. Mm. And reading that, I immediately equated the Jewish Holocaust to the Holocaust that we're seeing around the world now. Uh, to the tune of 42 million unborn children being murdered every every year, and mm. uh, and and that really really struck me. So. And I'm pleased we're going to do something about it. We are going to do something Maybe about it. Yeah, um, we're not ready though yet to talk about that nope. just yet. Pretty no. soon. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Yeah, it's going to be very very big. All right, uh, we've taken up a lot of time. Maybe we'll even run a little long today since it's our first day back. Let's take some yeah. questions out of the chat room. All right, send more questions because we're lacking here. We only have what? two. This is the question. First one. I work at a tattoo shop, and I witness to four or more customers a day using Way the Master. Just wanted to know your thoughts on a Christian working at a tattoo shop. 
Well, here's my thoughts. If I was a Christian working in a tattoo shop, I'd try and tattoo some scriptures onto the person without them actually <laughs> realizing it. <laughs> okay. I think that might be a crime. <laughs> really? I, I don't think you can actually, because I think that would constitute vandalism. I don't think you can actually vandalize a human body I'd without say, some repercussions. No, I'd say you just give them a free tattoo. That's what they give you. A little bit of extra, a little bonus there. So, okay, so what do, you, what do you think, though, about uh, uh, Christian working in an establishment well, like that? It's good that you're there. You're salt. You know, and your light where there's not much light in a lot of those places. Yeah, that's true. Most tattoos you get don't say nice things. Right. You've got demons, and it's, uh, it really expresses what the darkness that's that area is in. But it's a matter of conscience. If you begin to question something seriously, I'd ask God to move you on, open other doors. But yeah. uh, happy is he that condemns not himself, and that thing that he allows. Romans 14, 21, 22. There you go. Chad, what do you think? Yeah, it certainly is a matter of, of conscience. I, I wouldn't tell you you can't be a Christian and can't work at, and work at a tattoo shop. So it's it's conscience. Yeah. So. Yeah, and uh, while while there is a verse uh, I think specifically directed to the Jewish people in the Old Testament regarding tattooing your body, mm -hmm. uh, that was you know for them at that time. It's not a moral law per se, and you know uh, tattoos aren't sinful in and of themselves. Uh, I think depending upon why you're getting the tattoo. Mm. If you're getting a tattoo to simply draw attention to yourself, then I think there's reason to question why you're getting the Well, if you're getting, getting a tattoo, tattoo because you don't really want a job, just go <laughs> ahead and do that. <laughs> so. We had a guy with just bad language written across his chin. I mean, the bad word. Oh. He, he came and said, I can't get a job. <laughs> I don't wonder why, you know? Wow. Okay. All right. I think it's great though that this person could be there and yeah. actually share the gospel. Absolutely. I've seen on on television some of the tattoo shops, people uh, really open it up more than I ever knew at these shops because uh, a lot of times they're getting a tattoo because something really impactful sure. happened in their life. They they Either lost good or somebody. Bad. And yeah. Yeah. So uh, and they're really open to, to talking. So. Yeah. So so long as your conscience is clear, working then in that kind of establishment, preach the gospel. Mm. Yeah. All until right. Until they kick you out. Until they kick you out. Yeah. All right. Let's take another. Next question. What are some of the biggest misconceptions that unbelievers have about God while you are open air preaching? Oh. Biggest mis... I think idolatry is uh, a problem with almost everybody. The, the, the God that most people, like atheists, don't believe in doesn't exist. They've got, a, they've got an image of God that's totally erroneous. I mean, when you and I think of God, we just think of the unthinkable, you know, that that which cannot be expressed because God is so awesome, so magnificent, so wonderful, so All powerful. positive. <laughs> yeah, and when the, he's good. when the unbeliever thinks of God, they think of this old guy with a stick in the sky with a big blowing beard, and if you look as though you're enjoying yourself, <laughs> hit you with a stick. Um, I remember my mum once, I mean, what do you think of when you think of prayer? Powerhouse, just incredible. My mum called once and said, I called earlier on, but you were saying prayers. And it just sounded like I was by my bed praying like this for <laughs> my teddy bear and stuff like that. Huh. Uh, but an unbeliever's attitude to prayer and all the things of God is totally erroneous. And that really is the root cause of most uh, uh, erroneous questions and objections that come. Chad, what do you think is the most common objection we get? Uh, yeah, a a couple of them come to mind. Uh, one, you know, is not God all loving? And yes, of course he's all loving, but they have no sense of God's justice. Right. So uh, that has to be taken into consideration. It's not like God's broken up into these different parts. He's indivisible. Mm -hmm. So uh, part of God's love is he's all loving, but he's also just. He will not let crimes go unpunished. Yeah. So uh, they have a hard time understanding if this God is all loving, you know, and I die and happen to show up before him, well, isn't he just going to open up the gates and, and let me in? Right. Uh, that's one. Yeah, right. I think the word all loving uh, is... I'm benevolent, to be more... Well, benevolent. Um, all loving gives us a sense that he's just so loving he couldn't care less about justice right. and truth and righteousness. That word all um, adds something to it. It's better to stay within the confines of Scripture and say God is, is love. love. Yeah. But he's not a slave to his love. He can withdraw his love. The Bible says keep yourself in the love of God. So you can get to a point where God, as Scripture says, he hates all the workers of iniquity. In, right. in Psalm 11, verse 14. So... Um, <laughs> so uh, it's good if someone says God is all loving to say, well, that's like saying when you're standing before a judge and you've committed a terrible crime, that the judge is all loving and giving the impression that he really doesn't care about the fact that you've done something wrong. So um, 
Yeah, uh, that's a good answer, Chip. Yeah, th yeah, just throw omnibenevolent sure. at him. God's omnibenevolent. <laughs> omnibenevolent. <laughs> and, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, you know, uh, I think the biggest misconception we hear a lot is that God doesn't exist. Yeah. And it's amazing how many people are angry with a God they don't believe exists. And they spend all the time talking about how he uh, doesn't exist. Right, but, uh, but, you know, that's Romans 1 all over again. Mm -hmm. They do that because they're simply trying to suppress the truth in their unrighteousness. Because they know God exists. There are no atheists. That's it. Yeah. Uh, let's, uh, uh, who are our winners today? And then we'll uh, try to take up more questions. Uh, winner number one, Joyce Bouchard from Vermont. Two, Curtis Wright from Mississippi. And three, Dale Hedman from Idaho. All right. Three of you are going to get a pack of the uh, IQ test. And uh, we'll be mailing that out to you shortly. Is it me or is, are we quiet today? Does You're quiet. We're probably jet lagged. Is it still jet lagged? I think it is. It's going to be jet lagged for another thing. couple of months. <laughs> <laughs> no, but stay tuned because we will wake up. Uh, we will continue to wake up. All right, let's go back to the chat room. Wake life. up! All right, next question. There are people out there living a gay Christian life, uh, active gay Christian life. I think that's the name of it. Uh, God's the one who called them and has their heart and they are in relationship with him, will they be in heaven? So it's kind of a broken up question there, but I think what the question <coughs> is, is can you be gay and still be a Christian? It's really like if you substitute the word gay for the word adulterer, it, it brings it into perspective. Can you be an adulterer and be a Christian? Can you have an adulterous Christian club? And the answer is no, you've got to give up all sin and follow after righteousness. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. And, and so it's very, very clear in Scripture that if you hold on to your sin because you love your sin and tack the name Christian at the end of it, it doesn't change a thing. You're still in your sins. Yeah, and I think the key is uh, wanting, wanting disregard for, for God's law. Jesus said that if, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Now, there are no perfect Christians walking on, on the face of the earth. You're close. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Don't, don't strap me with that. <laughs> uh, sanctification is indeed a, a process, but... You know, uh, Hebrews 10 makes it clear if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Do, do Christians uh, commit adultery? Yes. Do Christians steal and lie? Yes. Do they do that thinking that God loves that sin and uh, will turn a blind eye to that sin? And uh, they can go on committing that sin wantonly with no regard for the cross? The answer is no. Mm. The answer is no. So, uh, you know, uh, if, uh, if a person is claiming to be uh, active in a homosexual lifestyle while and refusing to repent of that sin or not seeing it as a sin while at the same time naming the name of Christ, they should examine themselves to see if they're in the faith. Isn't it called antinomianism? Yeah. <coughs> Total dis disregard for God's law and for righteousness continuing in your sins. Yes, Jim? Yeah, I really like the way you answered it, Ray, and I think it's good just to distinguish, you know, between somebody that might ha be a homosexual and practicing homosexuality, uh, the same as being a heterosexual and practicing, you know, promiscuous sex outside of marriage. Uh, I think you can be a homosexual, but not practicing it, not being active in it, <coughs> and still be a believer, just like you could be uh, a heterosexual and still have these male, red-blooded male tendencies, but you don't act on them. So it's those who practice such things uh, that are going to be uh, in, in judgment. You guys want to do another question? Sure. <laughs> yeah. What did I? Uh, well, I, uh, you know, let's, well, let's go. Well, I, uh, what do you think, Ray? <laughs> you handle it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sense some tension. <laughs> <There's> ten <laughs> you know, Ratings. Well, it's been two weeks. <laughs> two weeks without any tension. Uh, the thought I is, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. I, I, I don't think, think so. anyone can... <coughs> I, I don't think it's a matter of... It, when it comes to homosexuality, I don't think it's a matter of practicing or not. I mean, if you're, if, if you're, if you're a homosexual, then you are still preferring men. And no, what that's I'm saying is, so you, you misunderstood that a little bit. Okay. Uh, what I'm up. saying is, if there's a man, all right, that's a homosexual, he's practicing it, and he repents of that, he rejects it, he disassociates with it, and he puts his faith and trust in Christ, but he still has these feelings somewhere far back. You know, I'm not going to say this guy's not a Christian. Oh, got it. I see what just you're saying. Because, so it's but he's, he's constantly he's battling the sin. He's, he's not giving into it. He's... You know, it's right. Roman 7. He's warring yeah, with the flesh. Oh, okay. there. There. Yeah, oh, that, that makes, makes sense, sense, Chad. Yeah. Okay. Let's give Chad so a now head. let's take one yeah, more so question. A unclear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. So let's take another question. Sure. Okay. Uh, did you guys use Isaiah 53 or Psalm 22 when you were witnessing in Israel? 
Did you guys? Did Did you, Chad? Did I remember you? Boy, did I. <laughs> that was my favorite, Isaiah 53. Uh, just to give you folks a, a portion of the scripture uh, that we used when we're out there. It's really powerful. I can give you a couple examples. Uh, it says, surely he has borne our griefs. And so what's really impactful about this is the prophecy of Jesus Christ. For those of you that don't know, it'll be made very clear by the words. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Every man has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, as I was talking to some Jewish folks that were out there, I was told by uh, some that had become Christians that the rabbis actually skip Isaiah 53 Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times in their teachings. So I would approach uh, some of the Jewish men I remember one, uh, we were uh, outside the, the Lake of Galilee, and I approached him, and I quoted this to him, and I asked him, do you know who that's speaking of? And he says, well, I assume you're talking about Yeshua, Jesus. And I said, yeah, do you know where that's written? And he says, well, is it written in your, uh, I imagine, your, your New Testament or New Covenant scriptures? And I said, well, here, that's the rub. Uh, are you familiar with the prophet Isaiah? Yes. Well, that was penned by the prophet Isaiah, as you know, hundreds of years before Jesus Christ or Yeshua ever walked the earth. And he was legitimately stunned. Another really? one by uh, the, uh, uh, what's that wall? I the Wailing Wall? The, the, wall. The, the, western, the, the Western Wall. Or the western Wailing Wall. wall. Oh. Uh, there was a uh, Orthodox uh, Jewish man, and I quoted this scripture to him. And uh, he hit the nail on the head, too. Yeshua, uh, in your New Testament scriptures, and he was saying, I see how you've memorized your New Testament. Isn't the Old Testament important to you? I said, absolutely, Old Testament's important to me. He goes, and why don't you know the Old Testament like you know the New? And I go, are you familiar with the prophet Isaiah? Of course. Well, that's Isaiah 53. And, oh, he was shocked. He's like, no, it's not. Show me. You have a Bible? Show me in your Bible. Show me in your Bible. So, you know, with confidence, I start turning to Isaiah 53, and I'm just about there. And he goes, wait, 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 wait. Is that in Hebrew or is uh-huh. that in English? Yeah. I said, well, it's, it's in English. And he goes, oh, I won't trust it then if it's, if it's not in Hebrew. Said, All right. Well, go check it out in the Hebrew text. So Why yeah. was he <coughs> listening to you if you're speaking them in English? You should have been speaking them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we got into that. Well, you know, these <coughs> words we speak in English, are they meaningful and, you know, so on. Mm. He was a little flustered. And, but Isaiah 53, wow. you know, that's a real powerful one. Let's yeah. pick this up tomorrow. Yeah, let's pick this up tomorrow. Time we is did gone. run a little late. Uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, Do you remember uh, I remember. <laughs> Let's I remember. Remember what? No. Uh, but thank you for joining us. We will be back tomorrow morning, 11:30 a.m. Pacific time, right here on this channel. And until then, be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. Proclaim the gospel. Presents on the box.